Hey everyone, traders, friends, and family, welcome to statistically my most profitable day of the week. That's why I spell it Wednesday, W-I-N-S-D-A-Y. Let's hop into some stocks that you requested and that I think might be moving, look at some analysis, talk about them, and enrich lives together. You rock, I'll see you in the video. Hey traders from around the world, how are you today? It is Wednesday with your Real Life Stock Review, January 23rd. Let's go look over some stocks. And just as a reminder, I do look at any stocks that you request. So feel free to post those in the comment section pretty much at any point in time if you have something specific you want me to look at. What was interesting is kind of a little bit of a conundrum yesterday. Yesterday, the SPY did have a one black crow on the daily chart, but the hourly chart looks a little bit bullish and it does kind of seem that we're bouncing off of that. Here was the hourly chart on the SPY and if I just kind of pull up the just regular old moving averages, we just pulled right down into the 50, threw in a little bit of another low, you know, right there and then just kind of bounce. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Now again, tomorrow, could we roll over and break down? Absolutely, we, we could, we, we will see if we do. And my thought is if we don't, realistically tomorrow or at maximum the next day, then you know, again, if we don't break down, a trade sideways and a pop above these candles would be bullish in my personal opinion. So I really like that retest of the averages. Again, we have like this one, two, three, this could be an easy way four, we could have a way five, you know, pop from here. So we're gonna see because the cues, uh, if we hop over there, the cues are, or at least did post pretty much a perfect evening star reversal. So you can't really get much better than this. And we did actually take out the low of the evening star. So we did make a little bit of a lower low today. So technically we made a lower low and lower high. This is just one of those points in times of the market where it's like, will this be a bullish S curve and we bounce, right? And we kind of break out of here. Or obviously is this like the bigger S curve on the bear side where we just start slowly rolling over. So over the next two to three days, we really will find out that information, I think. And we'll just have to see because the 15 minute chart on the queues, we did have some decent buying most of the day once this hammer candle came in, just a slow, steady grind higher. Although I did uh, set up a trade on Facebook, narrowly missed it, almost got triggered in, would have been a decent trade and just kind of kept on going lower. Here is the five minute chart. And this was a kind of a late in the afternoon, low of the day break, and it would have worked out relatively nice. The entry, um, this is when I started looking at it over here. And when this candle broke down, uh, and then this guy made a new low of the day, I set the trade up. And we set the trade up, let me see, where is, where is Slack? I'll just bring that over so you can kind of see back in the day what it looked like. So this was it uh, right here, 148.18 by 144.88. And this was the trade setup itself. And you can see I just kind of used the low of these white candles. So I kind of used the open of that candle, the low of that white candle. When I was setting it up, I was really debating where to put the entry. It was kind of like, do I put it a little bit higher or do I put it right at the bottom of this candle, which actually would have filled that one um, in hindsight, it would have been the exact entry to take. So on Facebook, realistically, we can see that it traded down, retested, made new low, retested again, had one final thrust, and this was this trade right into the 50 EMA on a daily, and then bounced. That was gonna be my target. Here's the daily chart, and you can see the 50 EMA was at 143.17, the low of the day was 143.06. So that was gonna be the exit on Facebook, that was gonna be pretty much it and we are just banging our head against the 100 something moving average, setting up for potentially a really good gap on earnings if it does happen. So if we trade down you know, into earnings and then we gap above this resistance on earnings, man, that would realistically be, I think, best case scenario for a stock that's kind of struggling you know, technically and somewhat uh, financially right now with all the um, F FCC things going on. But here's the weekly chart. And the weekly chart is working on and creating a double bottom. So you made this, had a lower low right here on Facebook. So the stock came down, came up, came down, came up. And you know, like a lot of stocks, you kind of have this 
double bottom-esque look to it. So from here, we'll just kind of see what happens on Facebook. Here's Square. And I love the fact that Square did close up today, up 1.84%. High wave, bearish, inside day candle. I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but I'm really jazzed up for a break either direction, bullish or bearish. Tomorrow could be a lot of fun. And tomorrow, I'll actually be doing a presentation in Augusta, Georgia for the um, servicemen and women at Fort Gordon. So if anyone is in the Augusta area and wants to connect for dinner, let me know as we'll be doing that Thursday night around 7.15. So shoot me a quick email. I'll be happy to give you some information on that. But on Square, very pretty candle. I love it. I mean, this could pop any direction tomorrow. Keep your eyes peeled on that. And I just love how it's kind of getting compressed in between the 100 and the 200 something moving average. My buddy Falco has a 55 put sale for February. Got the $70 week one covered call on Square. And really just gonna sit back and see what it does. Here's Netflix, NFLX, and Netflix was down a little bit today. I was looking at just yesterday doing a $400 and above bear call spread for March. And my plan as of yesterday was to, as you can kind of see, get in on a retest and kind of expect a rollover. We did retest today. I did look for bear call spread premium, 400 and higher, and there really wasn't any. So what I'm thinking of doing next, potentially, is maybe tomorrow or the next day looking for a bear call spread and a bull put spread for March and see if I can kind of condor Netflix. They're coming out with some great shows right now, a lot of content, content is still king. And here's the weekly chart, just a beautiful bounce off the 100 symbol. If we ever do get down to that 193 mark, that will be a no brainer buyer zone. But what is interesting is we do have a one black crow so far on the weekly chart on Netflix and I do think this gap right there ends up filling at some point on Netflix. We'll just have to see, but with this lower high, I'm leaning slightly more towards the bear side on Netflix right now. That of course doesn't mean it's going to happen by any stretch of the imagination, but a little bit of a sideways move in here. Right now, we're in between the 100 and 200 on the daily. We could get stuck there for a specifically decent fun period of time. And then we'll just kind of find out what happens, you know, between that. So looking for a condor on Netflix. Uh, so many good gaps today. Tesla was a really good gap. Had a few people play Tesla. And this was a just a very pretty gap down. Had a gap and go on Thursday, which we talked about on the Friday stock review. A lot of people made some glorious gainages on that. And then we gapped down again today, showing me that most likely Tesla is going to slowly kind of keep creeping down. It was a retest gap on a five minute chart. And if you got a chance to play Tesla, you did it one of two ways. This was an evening star reversal pattern right there. And as this candle was forming, everybody in the room was like, all right, we've got a bullish candle. Let's get in below there with a stop above. And obviously that particular pattern just never rolled down. So we didn't get triggered in there. And then most people were looking for this trend line to break later in the day, of course. What was really nice about this candle is it broke above the high and you can, you can pretty much rest assured that people did buy there for some crazy reason. One, two, three, four, five white candles in a row on the five minute chart to make a new high of the day. Not the time to go bullish. So anyway, some people went bullish there, they got trapped, it came back up, gave them a chance to exit for break even, plummeted, here's your support, and this right here was the bullish candle that you don't wanna get taken out short. Entry there, stop somewhere right around here, and a nice flush for a lower move on Tesla. So that was a very pretty retest gap, and I am looking to keep an eye out for um, some additional put sales or option selling on Tesla. I think we have a little bit lower to go, most likely, I and mean, then when that happens, I'll probably be keeping my eyes on, again, the 150 and lower area for either February or March, most likely March, if I can get some good gains around that 150 put sale, which again, this particular point in time, mathematically, is about 137 points away, I think I'll be relatively comfortable with some put sales and or a bull put spread down there on Tesla. Anyway, that about wraps it up for me, folks. If you have any requests, 
Get them in that comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody. Real Life Trading is hosting the free week. This is one of the most celebrated online possibilities for education there is out there. January 28th through February 1st, that starts next week. Reallifetrain.com, click on that banner, register for the free week. It will be exciting, it will be wonderful, it will be enriching. There will be loads of people asking so much, uh, so many good questions, growing, learning, progressing together. I'm really, truly excited for it. The next one will not be until June or July of this year. Only happens two times a year, mostly because I'm a terrible salesman. So I would love for you to get into the trading room. Let's trade together. Myself, Mr. Brad Reed, Mr. Blake Anderson, some of the best traders in the world are there. Mr. Stephen King, Robert Falco, Bob Lafrini. I can just continue this list. It's a long list of wonderful people. Troy Beinhauer, we got ourselves, Chuck Marsh, we got Joe Sadoti, John Salvio, we got Lee and Hoxian from Virginia and New York City. Great meeting you both. We got Gabriella, we got Andrea up in Montreal. So many phenomenal people just surrounding ourselves with love from all around the world. We got traders in India, we got Australia covered, we got the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, sign up, I'll see you. That starts next week. Make sure to be there. Until next time. Love life, love life, trade life.